What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D video. So, I can tell you guys are really into the Reg D content because the laddering content on Reg C sort of fallen off. I'm going to try to do a little bit more laddering content in a couple of days so I don't get burnt out um, on Reg D content. Uh, but I will try to sort of trickle that in there before the season starts. But yeah, today we're going to be going over a moveset guide for Cleaver. And I'm going to be honest, this thing is what you get when, like, it, it, it does what it says in the box. It's going to set up Stealth Rocks for you. And I think that if there was ever a video that was a little bit unnecessary, it would be the how to use Cleaver video because I think most people would be able to figure it out. But yeah, he's got like one moveset and this is going to be variations on it. What I really want to cover is the potential for Cleaver. Uh, so the latter half of this video will be me talking about the partners and the reason I actually think it's going to be a really valuable tool going forward and how I think it'll sort of shake up the metagame. But yeah, before we do that, if you guys enjoy this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Answer my comment question of the day, which is what moveset guide do you want to see next? Anyways, let's just get into it. So. Cleaver is the new branching evolution of the Scyther line. If we actually take a look at Scyther, here's a fun fact for you. You have Scyther, you have Scizor, not Mega Scizor, hold on. Regular Scizor, rest in peace Mega Scizor, uh, and Cleaver. Despite what all evolutions would lead you to believe, these guys all have the same base stat total. They just redistribute the stats but it always adds up to 500 um, and they also gain different abilities. But where Cleaver stands out is its exclusive move in Stone Axe and whether or not this will be distributed more heavily in future games, I don't know. I personally hope it doesn't because this move is absurd. Stone Axe is a 65 base power move that sets up Stealth Rocks on the target side, meaning that... All right, how do I explain it? Pokemon like Ting Lu would sometimes run Stealth Rock. Pokemon like... Even Garganical would sometimes run Stealth Rock in VGC this year. But it always felt like a risk. You know, you would only do that if you had a free move slot and you just really couldn't think of any other more valuable move. Uh, Stealth Rocks are valuable this year because of how drawn out the games get and how switch heavy this format is. Um, Cleaver can run that as its main attacking move. And while it doesn't stack on top of each other like, you know, Ceaseless Edge would, um, it's still a really valuable tool, and the only downside is the 90 accuracy, which, let's be real, rock moves are not known for having great accuracy anyways. So there's really no reason not to run this move. You might think, okay, well, why not just run Stone Edge over it as my main rock stab? Um, well, the reason you wouldn't run Stone Edge over it is because Stone Edge, actually, while it is 100 base power, it is 80 accuracy, and you only have 8 of those, where Stone Axe is 65 base power, and you have 24 of them, and it's 10% more accurate, but it's boosted by the ability Sharpness, where Stone Edge would not be, meaning that instead of 65 base power, it's 97. So it's about as strong as Stone Edge with none of the downsides and sets up Stealth Rocks. Yeah, like that's that's what you're going to want to run. So yeah, basically this move coming off of 135 base attack is going to hit like a truck, and Rock is one of the best offensive typings in the game. Uh, it's resisted only by ground steel and i think that might be it i think I, I might be missing one no i think it's just ground and steel anyways and it hits a lot of things for super effective a lot of important typings like fire flying ice bug uh yeah it, it is it is a very good offensive typing and just having that pretty much one of the most reliable stabs in the game at 90 base power or one of the most reliable rock stabs in the game at 90 base power is really big uh so yeah uh, Cleaver is going to almost always run that. I don't see a reason not to run it. And it is kind of frail. 70 HP, 95 defense, 70 special defense. While it isn't like the most frail thing ever, the typing bug rock isn't like great. You're going to be hit super affected by water, by, um, what's it called? By rock, by steel. Those are all decent typings and you don't have like a lot of resistances. You do get hit neutrally by ground, which is a really nice benefit of the bug typing. Uh, but yeah, you're also getting hit neutrally by fire. So any like defensive bonuses that Rock has kind of gets thwarted by the bug typing. So yeah, don't focus on living hits for the most part. I would actually just say you're going to want to run Focus Sash like 90% of the time. Uh, Stone X, Protect, X Scissor, Tailwind. X Scissor, by the way, one of the most mediocre moves in the game. Uh, there are Pokemon that not only get X Scissor, but also get Leech Life. And these Pokemon have no reason to run X-Scissor because Leech Life 
is just X Scissor, but better. It heals you for 50% of the damage dealt. Cleaver, on the other hand, does have a reason to run it. X Scissor is now categorized as a slashing move, meaning that sharpness boosts it from 80 base power to 120, making it a bug type close combat with no drawbacks. You know what? Bug, while it isn't the greatest offensive typing, does hit some pretty important things. Psychic types, dark types especially are huge. Like, this thing's going to be Ting Lu's worst nightmare. Actually, let's go ahead and just pop that into the damage calc right here. Uh, Cleaver, go with like 252 Jolly. Guess I don't have to change anything. Uh, X Scissor versus a Ting Lu. Ting Lu, one of the most defensive Pokemon in the game. Let's go with like standard Assault Vest. Um, or not, that's not standard assault vest. That's my weird assault vest. I made a little while back. Offensive citrus berry. Why not? Uh, yeah. So X scissor, it does like 73% of this thing. If you run like an adamant nature, 80%, let's say you like even life orb that thing. Let's say you give this thing a life orb for some ungodly reason. Uh, yeah, you're one shotting Ting Lu's with 12 HP, but let's just see like the 252 variant. Uh, yeah, that is a roll to one shot max HP Ting Lu if you were to life orb it. That being said, I don't think it's necessary. Just focus Sash it. You get more value out of it that way. And the last move, um, the only thing that Stone Axe and Excessor doesn't hit is Steel type. So close combat is generally going to be what you want to run, especially since you're already running that Sash. But it also does have access to Tailwind. So I did want to make note of that. That is a decent move on Cleaver. Uh, it maybe isn't the best option, but uh, we've seen weirder Pokemon run Tailwind. Choice Band Cleaver. It's the same set. But now we have U-Turn. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just going to be like a more scary cleaver. If we actually just go ahead and pop this guy into the damage calc, we can actually check the damage versus that thing too. Um, here. Let's just look at this damage. Waistband cleaver. Your X scissor is a roll to one shot max HP Ting Lu uh, versus what's like another like really solid Pokemon in the format. Uh, actually, I want to check Rillaboom. I want to see how much... I know that x Scissor is going to one-shot it, obviously. Um, but I want to see how much... Yeah, U-Turn is a roll to KO. Stone Axe is doing, like, 50%. Honestly, just getting to click Stone Axe into a frailer Pokemon is, like, half the benefit of running this thing. Yeah, I mean, like, you're going to one-shot, um, like, less bulky, uh, Fluttermane now, obviously. You know, Stone Axe is just, like, a clean one-shot. Actually, does even, like, the bulky Fluttermane live... No, it doesn't. It, like, never lives that. That's insane. Yeah, um, the only thing with this is you definitely want to have, like, some kind of defiant partner next to it or something just to increase this thing's longevity because you don't have that focus sash anymore. And honestly, 90% of the value is in one move. So you need to make sure that you get that move off. And I'm going to I'm gonna be exploring ways to help you get that move off uh, with the partners. But yeah, Assault Vest is the final variant. I think you could get away with an AV with this guy. He does have usable spit F and HP. So you want to max out the bulk as much as you can. 107 speed. By the way, these are all Terra Grass. I, I think the only set I didn't say Terra Grass was Terra Rock on the Choice Band set, and that's just to annihilate things. Um, but Terra Grass is a really good typing for Cleaver. It's going to allow you to ignore the Rage Powders, the Spores. Um, it's going to allow you to defensively cover for your uh, weaknesses as a Rock type. Uh, basically, it's going to make it so you no longer die to uh, Water Moves and yeah it's just it's a good defensive typing you know if you're a rock type most of the time you want to tear into a grass type so yeah uh we're maxing out that hp we're hitting like the last attack bump at 198 uh, we have four defense 44 special defense and we hit 107 speed with 12 evs and that's going to make it so if you do have tailwind active you're outspeeding dragapult granted maybe you want to be a little bit faster in this metagame maybe you want to outspeed regieleki which if i remember correctly you need to hit 139 in that case you know, maybe you would just adjust your spread to do something like this. You would just hit that 139 and then like, actually that looks like a garbage spread. Let's just, let's just, yeah, I guess that, that would be like the other variant. But I think, I don't think you really need outspeed Reggie. Like you don't care about it too much. If you have the AV, you're going to one shot it with Stone Axe for the most part. Actually, let's check on that. Non-choice band. Uh, yeah, it's a roll to one shot. So yeah, um, let's talk about the partners and the value that this Pokemon is going to bring to your team. So I think that a notable partner for this guy is actually going to be Ting Lu. While they are both weak to water types, I think that just having the defensive bonus that Ting Lu grants you with Vessel of Ruin is really nice. And there are other Pokemon on the team that uh, Cleaver is going to want to be with that benefit from Ting Lu as well, like Rillaboom. Uh, but yeah, 
Uh, other things that Ting Lu can do for Cleaver is actually what you can do is after Stone Axe goes up, like an Assault Vest, uh, Ting Lu could feasibly run Ruination. Uh, and that's going to allow you to lower Pokemon's HP to 50% of what it is. And if you just spam Ruination with rocks in the field and have enough like offensive presence to or offensive pressure to force things to want to switch, it's going to make it so everything's just getting chipped into range of getting like one shot by a more powerful Pokemon in the back. Uh, Rillaboom is also a very good partner for it. Not only does Rillaboom cover for the water type weakness that uh, Cleaver has, also having access to Fake Out, making it easier for you to get your Stone Axe off, but Tinglu, or not Tinglu, but Cleaver is also going to be able to cover for the fire type weakness that Rillaboom has by one shotting those fire types with Stone Axe. So that is very, very good. And also, fire types that want to switch in on Wood Hammer are now going to have to take 25% damage from Stealth Rocks. King Gambit is just a Pokemon that I recommend you run next to it because it's going to allow you access to a Defiant Pokemon uh, with access to like Sucker Punch. And King Gambit is a Pokemon where at plus one, it comes close to one shotting a lot of things, but it's it's like at full health, a lot of things are kind of calced to live. So I think that just having those rocks in the field uh, will allow for King Gambit to pick up more KOs uh, more frequently. And obviously, you know, one of the plays you would make against a Sucker Punch, if you're like, why, why did I type in Sucker Punch twice? One of the plays you would make against a Sucker Punch would be to swap out into a Pokemon and avoid that damage entirely. Um, and yeah, no, you're not going to get to swap as freely with Stealth Rocks in the field. Chi Yu. It is an offensive fire type that forces a ton of switches, like a ridiculous amount of switches because of the offensive presence it carries. You know, 135 base special attack with Beads of Ruin. What you're going to be able to do is one of the best typings to switch in on, on Chi Yu is going to be those fire types. You know, your your like average Chi Yu swap in is going to be like an Arcanine or um, obviously Heatran's like a really good option here. But like, yeah, like your fire types, Pokemon that resist fire moves um, are, are going to be your best swaps. And like what Pokemon resist fire moves, you know, Arcanine, whatever. Having to force that switch is going to make it so that they take like that damage from the Stealth Rock and then they're just chipped into range of like two heat waves. It's actually for that reason that I think that maybe like Choice Scarf Chi Yu isn't going to be a bad option because of the just the fact that it doesn't need to pick up the KOs from full anymore most of the time. Just having that is like really, really big. And Fluttermane does a similar thing. I think it just pairs well with Chi Yu. So, you know, it's another Pokemon where things are calced to just barely live these hits. And if they end up having to take any chip damage, it's just, it's over for them. But yeah, um, I think that Cleaver is going to be a Pokemon that it, it's going to do this. This is my prediction for Cleaver. And I'm always right, by the way. I was right about Gyarados, which means I'm always right. We have a sample size of one, which is enough for me to say 100%. Um, Cleaver is going to be heavily overvalued at the beginning of the metagame. And people are going to run it like... I think people are going to think it's like a noob trap and they're going to run it on like a few teams where it just doesn't make sense. Um, and then it's going to fall off. And then some really good players are going to figure out how Cleaver works and why the Stealth Rocks are important. And then two things are going to happen. We are going to see heavy increase in Cleaver hyper offense teams. And in response to that, heavy increase in Glamora usage. The reason Glamora like really benefits from Cleaver existing is not only is it one point faster than Cleaver and can probably one shot it with a power gem, but also it has access to Mortal Spin, the only spinning move that is used not to remove hazards, but does it anyways. If we actually take a look at like rapid spin users in this game that you would use in VGC, it would basically just be like Great Tusk is the only one that could like really run it. Maybe like you could fit like a heavy duty boots. Heavy duty boots. Yeah, I almost said heavy booty dudes again. Um, you could fit like a heavy duty boots Torkoal on your team maybe or something. But yeah, it's really hard to find these Pokemon. As far as Defog goes, uh, I guess a Pokemon that could run Defog would be Corviknight. But Corviknight already struggles to like fit all the moves that it wants to run on its moveset. So yeah, uh, yeah, go more usage through the roof. I think it's actually gonna be one of the best Pokemon in the metagame if Cleaver picks up the way I think it's going to. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Cleaver. If you guys enjoyed, learned anything new, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.